Okay, my name is Oba in France and she's Oba. I'm from Anabra State in an Anichanos level government. I studied biochemistry, graduated from Anabra State University. I'm the last child of my parents. I'm the family of five and the last the last girl. Yeah, okay. We are four and it can a guy. Nine years old then. It happened uh, in the year 2004, 17th November. And we are having family issues. Like my daddy is the eldest son. Why uh, my uncle's wife, my uncle is the last child. So we are having issues like maybe they feel or they think if. Um, and she starts sharing uh, maybe the house, the property, the house, the house property or the rest, that um, my dad might be the one to collect the highest share, which normally is not done like that. But I feel, to me, I feel it's illiteracy, you understand? So, that particular morning, that, okay, on, on a Sunday in the night, one of my sisters came back from school. Then we are we living in a family house. One of my sisters came back from school, so my mom said, because uh, I sleep with my mom, why my brother sleeps with my grandma? So my mom told me to go and sleep with my grandma that particular morning, that particular night. I was like, Mommy, I don't want to stay with you. I don't want to sleep with my grandma. But you know, I was just nine years old then, I don't know much. So at the end of the day, I slept with my grandma. So in the morning, around five, I'm supposed to go to school. And mom, my mommy too is a teacher. So she's supposed to go to school too. So she started, she 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 woke up very she woke up very early in the morning to go and prepare for my school. And you know family house, the kitchen is out of the house, like from the uh, this thing, from the room, from the corridor, then the kitchen at the back. So my mommy went, used the back door to go and uh, boil hot water for my school, to cook for my school. Then, at the end of the day, she entered the toilet because the toilet was at the back too. So then my uncle's wife was asked outside with a bucket of acid, wait, waiting for my mom to open the door so that she can use that door to enter. She didn't sleep inside the house. She slept out because she planned everything. She, she used a ladder, she left a ladder and everything. So when she entered, when, my, when she entered through that door, she came inside, she pointed a torch. I was thinking it's my mom because I was, I was on the bed. So I was thinking it's my mom. I, I, guess I was like, mommy, no one answered me. I said, Tom, maybe it's not my mom. So the next thing I saw is that, the next thing I noticed was someone pouring me, pouring me a hot something. Then I don't know it was acid because I was just small. It's my first time. Pouring me something very hot, very, very hot. I was now shouting. Mommy, 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 mommy. So she, she left immediately because she planned everything. She opened the front door, used the ladder, jumped from the fence and escaped. So I was now shouting, mommy, mommy, mommy. My sisters, I was crying, shouting, even my grandma, because it affected my grandma too, the back of her neck like this. Yeah, it affected her, the back of her neck like this. I was now crying, shouting, everywhere was smelling very, uh, the odor was so thick, like everywhere was just smelling. I was feeling so hot. It was now, as if something was, it, the acid was not eating my body. I was shouting, crying, my eyes were going up. So, um, so my, my, mom, my, mom, my mom heard my voice, that, heard that I was crying. So she was now knocking, because she, she, uh, she closed the door. She closed that door. My mommy was now knocking on the door for someone to open the door. What is happening to, to her daughter? Something like that. So at the end of the day, my brother or I don't know any, any I don't know the particular person that op that opened that particular door. You understand? So at the end of the day, one of our neighbors took me to the hospital. Then, my, because you know, in Nigeria, before you, they were able, to, they, be, they will be able to attend to you, get a police report. So they told us to get a police report the evidence of the acid. So my mommy carried the bucket okay, of And that morning, that my uncle's wife, the children was there. The five children was there looking at us. My mom was like, let me just pour this acid to them. But another, another, of, another of her just told her, they are not the cause, they didn't do anything to you. So we left, my mommy left to the police, 
because she came to carry the bucket of acid as a proof. So she, she went, she started going to the police, to the station to get a report. Then me and our neighbor, he's like our, he's our family, our family friend. So he's more of my, he's more of like my uncle. So we went to, we went to the hospital. They started giving me first aid, but their first aid wasn't that strong because they don't specialize on bonds. It's just a normal hospital. They don't know anything about acid or whatever. So I was now there, I was now receiving treatment, but each day the, the injury was now getting more worse every day, you understand? And it was not eating my body, it was eating, it was eating me up. Out then I was so slim. I was very, very slim then because I, I don't have blood, I don't have anything. So the people were now coming to see me in the hospital. I was now telling my mom, why will you leave your daughter to be here? She's dying. Can't you see that there is no improvement or anything, you understand? So at the end of the day, they suggested a hospital for us to go to orthopedic Enugu. So we left on a, I think, is it on Sunday or on a Monday morning? They were on strike. But we thank God at the end of the day, they admitted me. They admitted me. So they started giving me first aid and they were saying that, uh, how would, like, why did, why did they bring me straight to the hospital? It was like, we don't know anything about this. And they were saying that the acid was actually eating my cells. And maybe if they were not able to bring me today, I would have been dead. Because then I don't know, I don't know myself again. I don't know myself again then. So that was where I, I, I did my first operation. Because the, my eyes was, there was a big hole here and here. So you can only see my eyeball because it ate my eye. So I, uh, they were now able to do me a skin graft to cover this place and this place so that the holes won't be showing. So at the end of the day, I was still in the hospital taking treatments. After everything, I got discharged. They told us, they referred, they told us to travel out for a surgery. If we have money, then I don't have money. We don't have money, we don't have funds for that. But they made sure I started going to school because the doctor told them to make sure I start going to school. That is very, very important. That if they don't take me back to school immediately, that is going to affect me psychologically. So they said, okay. So I came back from the hospital. I went back to school. That's how it happened. Okay, we were now going to court. We were going to court with them because my uncle's wife was nowhere to be found. So we were now going to the court. We are now going to court with my my uncle for him to be able to provide the wife. So they were now cooking up lies that, that my uncle, that my auntie is a mad person, that she's sick. That, that was why she did what she did. But in a normal, she's not sick. But you know, she, they are just trying to cover everything up. So we're now going to court, we're spending money. Then I was in the hospital, they were spending money on me in the hospital. They were spending money on, uh, on the court case. At the point, it's not making sense again, because they would tell us to come today, every day they were, they were adjoining the case. Come today, come tomorrow, come today, come tomorrow. At the end of the day, we got tired of going. It was never easy for me, even right from time, even the first day I came back, when I knew, when I was in the hospital, I never knew life would be hard, like I never knew that people would see me, they would run away, because normally when I was in the hospital, we were like, <laughs> like one center of people there, they don't see me, they don't see anything wrong with in me, because uh, uh, they are also sick, so that very, that, very, that very first day I came back from the hospital. My, my school, my primary school, where I, where I was schooling, they came to visit me. So they came, they were crying, they were somewhere vomiting, they were crying. Even my seat mates, the guy I, I sit with on the same seat, Joshua by name, he was scared, he was, he got sick, like, you know, all this kind of thing. I, I was now like, I was now crying, why are they scared, why are they scared of me, something like that. It's my first time, they were seeing me, they were running away, my, my childhood friends, they would see me, they would run away. I started feeling bad. That was when I knew that I have a very big, like, it's the, uh, like it's very, life is going to be very hard for me. But I never knew because they never told me, you understand? So, and when I started school, 
everybody was just looking at me. If I go out with my mom, everybody will be looking at me, running. So we'll be laughing. Ah, look at that face, something like that. I'll be feeling so bad. I'll be crying sometimes. Because on the normal then, I, I go out with my mom. So I get back to school. They will see me, they will run. They will shout, they will cry. So we don't even want to come close to me. I came back from school. I told my mom, I think I won't be going to school again. I think I won't be going. I think I won't be going to school again. She said, "Why? Why will you say something like that? It's not the end of the world, you understand?" So my mommy was now encouraging me. My mom would be like, "If they insult you, they insult back. Tell them they are not better than you. Something like that." No, I'm not the target. The target uh, was my brother, our only son, because he's the only he's the only son we have. So the target was actually my brother. But unfortunately, I was the one staying there because she knew that my brother sleeps with my grandmom. So she and we look very we look alike. And then I was small. I used to cut my hair. So if you see me, you think she, uh, he's my son, something like that. Yeah, I'm not the target. My brother is the target. Okay, one thing about me is that me, I've accepted the fact that, okay, this will be a reaction I will get from people in any new environment, any, any, any new environment I go to, is this is going to be, this is going to be the same reaction I will get from people. So the thing is that if I'm going to a new environment, I'll make sure, I'll make sure I go out, I go just on my own with, without anybody, you understand? So I'll be able to cope. So I'll be able to cope and the rest. But it was never easy. Like, people will see me, they will run away. Some people will even call me names. Look at her, she's very irritating, she's something like that. It's so, so painful, but I thank God. Like I said, I thank God for, the, for, for his grace because I didn't do it alone. my condition, eh, I get things very easily. Yeah, that's the only thing I need to, I, I just want to say, let me just cut the long story short. With my condition, I get things very easy. But now that I'm done with school, looking for a job, some said that it might be very difficult for me getting a job due to maybe because of my circumstances, that some companies or whatever might not want to hire me or something. But you know, I don't, like me, I don't, I don't believe in anything people say. I go for what I want. Like I go for what I feel might be true. Even if it's not going to be, even if, even if it's not true, I feel it's going to be possible because there is nothing that is, that is not possible. From my nine years till now, from the day of this incident till now, I can't really say I've forgiven her, and I can't really. I don't know. I, I don't know how I will react if I see her, because unfortunately I'm not a quiet girl. Because I might react badly if I see her, and at the end of the day I might not react. It depends. For now I've not seen her. I don't know how it's going to look like. But what I know for sure is that let me say maybe she did it now that I'm, I'm a grown up. I might not take it. I might. I might not take it. But you know. For now, I don't know if I'm forgiving her or not, but the only thing I know for sure is that I just want to be successful. That's the only thing I think of, nothing more than that. Actually, I've done, uh, I've traveled out for a surgery. It's a reconstructive surgery. I've done like close to four stages of surgery. I travel, I just, it, it's seven months now. It's just seven months I came back from India for a reconstructive surgery. You know it's not going to be more than that. It's not going to be more than that. It's just a reconstructive surgery. It's not like, um, there, is, there is no surgery that can ever make me look, as a look back the way I was. But they can just make it look better than I'm better. But not going to look the way I was. And the scars can never go.
Okay, to me, I'm still working on getting a job. I'm still applying, although I've not seen one yet, and I believe I'm, I will still have one. And secondly, I have. I, I want to. If I can be able to have more, if I, I can be able to have a fund, I will want to travel out of the country for my masters. I think from there, I can start doing whatever dreams that I have from there. Because I, I believe life there will be very easy for me more than here.